right, we're squeezing a lot into this morning and we're, we're keeping on track. It's pretty good, isn't it? Um, well, thank you, ladies. We, um, we want to throw some more in, so um, let's add some more. We're going to have some testimonies and uh, we have enjoyed fellowshipping uh, with uh, these brethren for a good many months now and uh, so Tim and Cheryl if you would uh, come and uh, share with us uh, they're going to come up and share with us their testimony of salvation and uh, they're going to join in membership this morning so we're looking forward to that so why don't you guys kick it off we're going to hear from them from mum and dad after that but uh, why don't you guys come and share with us come join her on My family and I have been truly blessed worshiping God with you during these past few months. We've been refreshed, encouraged, and comforted by your kindness and through the powerful preaching of God's word. We've been praying for quite some time for God's direction, and it's a blessing to now take this step and share a testimony with you. My name's Cheryl Baptista, and I can testify that I am a life that's been spared. At the age of two, even before I could ask God to save me, death stared me right in the face, and I didn't even know it. Sadly, another life was taken that day, but God had mercy on me, and he spared me. I'll leave my mom to give you more of the details of that event, as this would become a pivotal point in her life, which would later pave the way for my family and I to come to know Christ. Like many of you, I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school, kids club, church services. I was there every time the church doors were open. As a child, I got to know God through these church activities. I came to realize who he is, and I came to understand who I am. I don't remember the date of my salvation, but I do remember the day quite vividly. It was in the early months of 1996. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was at church playing with a friend. The pastor's wife took us aside and led us into the dining hall. She sat us in the maroon pews and there shared the gospel with us. By that point, I had already developed a reverential fear of God. I understood that only he could save me and I couldn't save myself. The choice between heaven and hell was simple. I chose heaven and I accepted Christ that day. Once again, God had spared me. And this time I wasn't only spared physically, I was spared eternally from a destination that was waiting for me. A few months later, on the 13th of October, 1996, I was baptized. I remember the date of my baptism because it's written in my very first Bible, which was gifted to me that day. I've been serving God for 27 years. I've been serving him in different parts of the ministry as he would lead. I cling on to his promises that assures me of my eternal security in spite of an elusive date because there was a day when I called upon him to save me. I want to close with a verse in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, which reads, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I thank God for the second chances that he gives me each and every day. I realized that he spared me to serve him. I've been waiting in eager anticipation for this day when I would see God add my family and I to his church. And now I can look forward to laboring with you in this field. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Timothy Bautista. Uh, my surname, Bautista, is actually the Spanish word for Baptist. 
So technically, I was born a Baptist. <laughs> um, I grew up in a Christian home where my parents um, were active members of a fun fundamental Baptist church in the Philippines where my grandfather used to pastor. Uh, at a very tender age, I was already participating in various uh, children's ministries like Sunday school, daily vacation Bible school, as we call it in the Philippines, and um, kids club. So all I can remember being a child was that we were always at church. But um, being raised in a Christian family does not automatically make someone a Christian. Um, I could still recall when I was about seven or eight years old that I started developing a fear of being left behind because at a young age, I already knew the concept. I was already aware of what the rapture is all about. Um, remember waking up in the morning, some mornings, and was like trembling, frightened that God had already taken my parents and uh, my little brother away to heaven and that I was left behind. On the night of April 22, 1989, um, it's still very vivid to me, um, that night we visited or we attended um, the evangelistic meeting of another church and here the pastor was preaching about hell. He quoted the verse in Mark um, 944 and it was reiterated in verse 48 where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. I was rather horrified, I was petrified. I knew that night that I needed to be saved. I was, it was very clear to me that as a sinner, I was bound for eternal damnation and only Jesus Christ can save me. I um, responded to the altar call and someone spoke to me, explained to me the way of salvation. And um, that very night, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. Um, this is my salvation testimony. In our day and age, um, the world is instructing us that, is telling us to tone down on preaching or even talking about hell. But I am a living testimony of someone who got saved um, by listening to someone preach about hell, the reality of hell, that hell is as much real as heaven is. So two years after, in June of 1991, I followed the Lord in water baptism. Um, Crossroads Baptist Church, Pastor, thank you very much for welcoming us with open arms from the first time we visited your church. We we're very grateful and may God bless you for your love, your kindness, and your hospitality. We are very excited and we look forward to becoming part of your church family. Thank you. a blessing, wasn't it? And uh, so now, Chris and Helen, would you like to come and join us? And uh, you're going to share your testimony with us as well. And, um, Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Helen Virai, for those who, do, who don't know me yet. And um, <clears throat> I could say, uh, our, uh, I accepted the Lord in 1989, and this is the continuation of Cheryl's testimony. Um, on my on, on my birthday, that was April 3, 1989, I accepted the Lord, and straight away God rewarded me uh, with Cheryl's life. Because I could say because uh, she got spared 
by uh, by what do you call this uh, by the death they were they were outside of the house we 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 live on a uh, highway by the way and uh, she was with her friends and then um, this little girl crossed the road and she got spared cross the, the one that crossed the road got struck by a uh, bus uh, a bus liner yeah so I was so happy that uh, <clears throat> I got my child and um, yeah so uh, that was back in the Philippines but then before I became a uh, Baptist I was a uh, Catholic which goes to the church every morning after taking my children to school and pray the ros rosary every morning but <laughs> uh, when I learn about Jesus Christ I uh, was so mad of myself I said why it's only now that I learned about Jesus Christ I said I, I kept praying and praying I didn't know that I'm praying to go to hell yeah so yeah I was really happy that I uh, I uh, learned about Christ and I accepted him and uh, until until now he is my Lord and Savior. Yeah, and uh, yeah. By the way, I got baptized twice <laughs> because in the Philippines we uh, I got baptized there uh, on the uh, at the river close to the uh, close to the church which I go. And then when we came to Australia. I was rebaptized in 1996 because the the church where, where I go in the Philippines cannot be contacted, so pastor rebaptized me. <laughs> yeah. so I'm thinking, I don't know if Pastor Brad will rebaptize me again. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm so happy, church, that. Uh, uh, you are you have the open arms open hands welcoming us every day here at the church and uh, yeah I, I'm I can't wait to be a member <laughs> okay thank you good morning everyone good morning church my brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. My name is Christopher. Just call me Brother Chris or Brother Reels. Um, several uh, generation, my family um, came from a United Methodist Church denomination. So I was born, raised, and uh, baptized in a Methodist church because the church is just, the border of our house and the church is just a fence. You can hear the, the, the service, you can hear the pastor singing, uh, preaching and the congregation singing. So sometimes I don't need to go to church. <laughs> and then um, and, uh, way back 1986, um, there was or there were two uh, theology students to become a pastor. And then they went to the field to um, spread the gospel of God. I think before they're gonna graduate, they have to finish some hours or, or it's a prerequisite from their school. I don't know because I'm not a pastor. And then when they finished the course, they came back to my hometown. They, cho they chose my hometown because there's no other Churches only Catholic Church, a Catholic Church that built built during 16th century. It's the biggest church, a biggest Catholic religion in my in my hometown. But thank God, when those pastors came, 
pastors came, because there are two of them, uh, there were 300 souls saved. At that time, I didn't, I was not even, um, what you call it, so, saved yet. Because I said, I'm already a Methodist. I said, what for? I closed my eyes and I opened my heart. So every time they have a, a service, I dress up and I go somewhere else. I don't want to see them. And I said, well, every time I see them, oh, here comes the praise the Lord again. They said. <laughs> and then the very first who converted it is my mom and my siblings, only me, be maybe because of pride. And then, uh, and then one day my, uh, my, uh, my mom asked me, why won't you try to come and just listen? So, okay, one, one Sunday morning, I dress up and I sat in front of that, of that uh, pews or chair. And then exactly that day, the ceremony is about hell and about the rapture. And I said, oh, I'll be left behind if I'm not going to accept Jesus Christ. And that night I dreamed that I was not caught in the rapture. In my dream, I dive in the river because the soldiers are coming. They're going to kill those who can worship God. <laughs> so the following Sunday again, I forwarded in front. And I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I thank the Lord and say, And that pride become fried chicken. <laughs> Thank you. Tim Sheriff. Bro, could you Caleb, could you just grab this and bring it up there? Aren't you thankful that his pride turned into fried chicken? <laughs> I am. I, they've been waiting on me to become members here, amongst everything else that's been going on. And um, Brother Chris cooked a, a good lot of things for the ladies' banquet, which was a great blessing. And uh, I just think of the words of, of the prophet set on the great pot every time I see him walk in with <laughs> a great pot. And then somebody didn't deal well with the, the food that was left over there and the next day it had gone off. Uh, that was me and I thought, oh, there they go. That's going to be the end of Chris. I know how much he loves um, preparing his food. But he's gracious enough. His pride's been turned into fried chicken, so that's all good. <laughs> so they're going to sign with us. Thank you. Um, the signature just means that they are in agreement with our statement of faith and constitution as a church, and um, we look forward to serving the Lord together with all of you guys. Isn't it a blessing that the, the wonders of true salvation, the gospel, can bring tears to the eyes so many years later as we reflect on God's goodness and mercy and the salvation that he um, proffers to his, his own? 